thought I was going to be really good this month and not buy an awful lot of books. Um, I mean, it didn't, didn't go very well, did it? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Katie from Anatta About Books uh, and today I'm going to be showing you all of the books that I bought in the month of January. So I'm going to go through them in the order that I bought them in um, last month. Uh, so I'm going to start off with a collection that I got, which were the Virginia Woolf Vintage Classics. Uh, I already had the Jane Austen version of these and I couldn't not get the um, the Virginia Woolf versions. The next one on my list are, uh, are the Russian classics, which can't wait to, uh, to get all of those. Look out for the next haul. <laughs> so we have A Room of One's Own, Mrs. Dalloway, To the Lighthouse, Orlando, which is the biography, or oh, Orlando, a biography, uh, The Waves, and lastly, The Years. So all of these are novels except uh, A Room of One's Own, which is an extended essay. A Room of One's Own is an extended essay collection all about the literal and figurative space um, that men take up in, in the literary world. Um, and it's all about how women writers uh, don't occupy as much space as the men. So I'm really excited to get to this. This was something that I think I actually did read during my degree, but I can't really remember. So I'm excited to get back to this because uh, it sounds really great. Uh, Mrs. Dalloway is the only one that I definitely remember reading <laughs> during my degree. Um, Mrs. Dalloway focuses on Clarissa Dalloway, who's getting ready to, to have a party, interspersed with memories of her past. And then alongside that, um, how her life is paralleled by uh, the story of a First World War veteran suffering from um, delayed traumatic stress uh, and how he's coping or, or how he isn't coping with that. I couldn't not pick this up even though I have read it and I think I already own a different version of this um, but I'm excited to get back to this. Then we have uh, To the Lighthouse which as you imagine is, uh, is about a trip to a lighthouse. Um, it centres around a family uh, and the story tells from two years uh, 10 years apart rather, so before their visit and also afterwards uh, and how an artist who um, travels with them uh, as part of the family is struggling to paint during a uh, family drama. Orlando is a satirical novel about a poet um, who changes between male and female so that he can meet uh, over, over many centuries so that he can meet lots of key literary figures. I have never heard of this one which uh, is a bit strange. I, I imagine that this is quite a, a popular one especially given the subject matter. It sounds really great so I am super excited to get to this one soon. Uh, I think this is probably the one that I'm going to start with even though most people I imagine would read them in order. I, I'm gonna start with this one because this sounds great. Uh, the Waves is actually the one that I know the absolute least about um, and I did just order it because it would match. <laughs> so let's have a quick look. The Waves is an astonishingly beautiful and poetic novel, it begins with six children playing in a garden by the sea and follows their lives as they grow up and experience friendship, love, grief at the death of their beloved friend Percival. Uh, regarded by many as her greatest work, oops, <laughs> The Waves is also seen as Virginia Woolf's response to the loss of her brother uh, who died when he was 26. So, I mean, probably I should have heard about it considering I did an English degree, but <laughs> Uh, this one also sounds like one that I'd want to get to quite soon. Perhaps I should do like a Virginia Woolf month or something. What month would be good to do that in? I'll have a think. And finally we have The Years, um, which is the last one that I bought of hers. Uh, this is a fictional narrative uh, stemming from I think the 18... 1880s um, following through to the 1930s and I think it follows a respectable family. Uh, so this one sounds really interesting as well. Yeah, this one is the chunkiest out of all of them. So inevitably probably the last one that I get to, but look at these covers. Aren't they just gorgeous? Like I couldn't not buy them all. <laughs> 
Next, I picked up Talking to Women by Nell Dunn. I picked this one up after seeing it on Jen Campbell's channel a little while ago, um, and I thought it sounded really fascinating. So this is a non-fiction where Nell Dunn talks to, I think, nine different women, and this is a transcript of her conversations. These women stem from different social classes and backgrounds. It's about getting their perspective on their lives, um, I think. So it sounds really great. I am super excited to get to this one very soon. Um, Jen did have great things to say about it, so I'm looking forward to, uh, to getting to this. Someone's just revving a motorbike outside. Brilliant. And it stopped. Uh, next is Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. Um, I bought this in January but also read it in January so if you want to hear a little bit more about my thoughts on this one um, you can watch my last video. This is about a family's way of coping with a uh, teenage pregnancy by one of the, well, by the daughter of the family um, and how they, they move from there. It focuses on lots of different aspects of this so um, you hear from uh, her partner for example, you hear from her parents and then you also get to hear from her daughter as well. Um, so it's it's a really fascinating look at how much this impacted them at the time um, and I definitely would recommend this. I enjoyed this a lot but go and uh, watch my other video to hear my final thoughts on it. Next we have My Dark Vanessa. Uh, this is by Kate Elizabeth Russell. I've only heard very good things about this. Um, this is about uh, a 15 year old girl I believe who has a relationship with her teacher and how she kind of romanticizes that relationship with her teacher and how everyone that can can see and, and us as readers know how wrong that is and how he's taking advantage of her but she needs to romanticize it to be able to cope with it and um, so that's what I've heard about it so far I, do, I kind of don't want to know anything else before I get into it because it just sounds so great um so so yeah Next we have Unnatural Causes by Dr. Richard Shepherd. This one I basically bought because I'd just recently finished binge watching Grey's Anatomy and I needed a little bit more medical in my life. <laughs> um, so I had previously read um, Adam Kay's stories about working for the NHS uh, and even though this is slightly different so this follows the life and many deaths of Britain's top forensic pathologists. Um, I really thought this might, might be uh, a bit of a corker to read. I'm really excited to hear about how um, how Dr. Shepherd uh, finds out all of the things about how these people that he is uh, inspecting the bodies of after they have died, um, how they actually died. So I just think that sounds fantastic and I'm really excited uh, to get to this and hopefully it will um, fill my the, the Grey's Anatomy shaped hole that I have in my life at the moment. <laughs> Next we have one that everyone will probably recognise. This is Greek Myths uh, by Jean Menzies, illustrated uh, by Katie Ponder. I, um, when I saw that Jean was coming out with uh, a book all about Greek myths, my knowledge of Greek myths is quite poor <laughs> and I thought that this would be the perfect method to be able to uh, to take some of that in. Um, I've read many retellings of Greek myths and I feel like a lot of it just goes over my head sometimes so I'm excited to get to this so that I can sort of fill in those knowledge gaps that I definitely have. Um, I think that this is just absolutely stunning. For those of you that haven't seen it before, just an example of some of the pages look how beautiful this is. Um, Katie has done an excellent job at illustrating this I have to say um, but I am so excited to just pick this up. This is one that I'm definitely gonna devour over a weekend sometime soon with a cup of tea. I just think it looks great and it's really accessible as well. I think this is actually aimed um, at children anywhere between 7 and, and 11 I think it was but obviously adults can read it too and I am very excited to uh, getting around to this very very soon. Then we have Weather by Jenny Offal. This is another one that I spoke about in my Book A Day in January video. I read this in January and absolutely loved it. It's focused around um, a librarian who gives advice to other people, but it's in very short bursts, as you can see. Um, this motorbike is driving me crazy. Why don't they go anywhere? They're just revving. Okay but it also focuses a lot on climate change, hence the title of weather, and also um, politics. Uh, it's also very recent as well, I think this came out in 2019, maybe 2020, so it's it's very current and what you're reading about is exactly what the world is going through now. So yeah. 
so this is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. Uh, as you can see, I've already made a start on this. I picked this up right at the end of January because I'd heard uh, such great things. I think it was in Mercedes Book of the Year, Books of 2020 video. I think this was her top spot. Um, so I'm really excited. Uh, and as you can see, I've already already made a start so uh, I'm looking forward to, to getting through this. So this is all about how Chanel was uh, the victim in the Brock Turner sexual assault case back in 2016 um, and it tells of how she is asked to go over the details over and over again um, in the court case uh, and at the very start she wasn't sure whether she was even going to press charges because she couldn't remember what happened um, and it's about how saying yes to pressing charges then led to a whirlwind of a trial and having to deal with quite horrific things so uh, this I'm really excited like I said to get through um, and this one will definitely be in uh, books that I've read in February. I forgot what month it was there didn't I? And lastly the final book that I hauled in January is The Yield uh, by Tara June Winch. I've seen this in a few of the most anticipated releases of 2021 videos. Uh, I think Simon um, showed this one, Simon Savage, and I just knew that I needed to pick it up. It sounded brilliant. I believe this is uh, an Australian novel actually, which won, yeah, winner of the 2020 Miles Franklin Award as well. So it just sounds amazing. Um, I kind of want to go into this a little bit blind. I haven't read too much of it, um, but I went through the blurb earlier and I just wanted to read the Yield is a celebration of language and an exploration of which makes a place a home, a story of a people and a culture dispossessed. It is also a joyful reminder of what once was and what endures, a powerful reclaiming of indigenous language, storytelling and identity. And I just think that that sounds amazing. So I am really excited to get to this. Look, even matches just my nails, brilliant. So yeah, I, I am really excited for this. And those were all of the books that I bought in January. So I could have done a lot worse. I could have done more damage. We shall see about how uh, how February goes. Um, I did haul quite a lot of books on my library app. Um, so kind of like a library haul. Um, so if you do want to hear about the ones that I have been listening to on audiobook or reading on um, e-reader, then just let me know and I'll make a video about it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, and subscribe. And please let me know in the comments what books you bought in January and uh, if any of these are now on your, uh, on your wish lists. Uh, so thank you for watching. Have a great week.